All right, so now we are in Italy and we are going to Abruzzo, which is in the lower, but not completely in the bottom right-ish corner of Italy. Um, and we're having a Montepulciano d'Abruzzo from Atelier. So, you know, I love a liter bottle when we can find them. And I think this is a really good example of what Montepulciano can be. Um, and just to back up, to give a little nerdy, uh, information about <laughs> the grape because this can be very confusing. There is a Montepulciano in Italy, which is actually in Tuscany. Um, and then there's also Montepulciano, the grape. So we're talking about the grape here in the region of Abruzzo and not the Montepulciano that is basically like a really fancy um, Sangiovese out of Tuscany. So with that in mind, um, this is a not what I would consider like the traditional way that Montepulciano is made like this is it's typical that like it could be in a large format it's like definitely like a approachable wine that's great to be shared with people. Um, well, actually, yeah, let's just again start from the beginning. So it's relatively dark. It's young. It's I think it's 2020. Oh, no, it's 2018. So it's not that young. It's got a few years on it. Um, and I actually chilled mine and I would recommend you chill yours, not a ton, um, but you know, maybe for like 20 minutes ish in the fridge. So it has more of like a ruby color. I don't have the best light for this right now. And on the nose, it smells very fresh. It smells like cherries. It smells like plum, but like really fresh plum, like not one that has been sitting around for a while. It smells like basically like dark fruit, a little bit on berries, but not so much. And then I don't get so much like, um, um, what's it called? Like earth tones in it. There might be a little bit, mine might be a little too cold for me to actually get that off of it as well. Um, but not so much on the florals, maybe like there is something there. It's probably like a bit of like baking spice. Um, but I don't know exactly which one. And honestly, something just like slightly vegetal about it. Not like, not like a pepper, but something, something that's just like hinting at maybe potentially like slightly underripe and that they probably harvested this relatively early. The alcohol and it's only 12.5%. And the Brutzo is typically a pretty, <clears throat> a pretty um hot region. So that would be a pretty, <laughs> pretty educated guess, honestly, about that, though I don't actually know for sure. So let's try it. Mm, so good. So we just had it for dinner with dinner and it's just a really easy drinking wine. Everything I just said was there. I would say it more like leaves with the plum and then it's got like deeper, like deep, dark cherries after. And then like the baking spice and some of those things are still there. And it's like, it's generally like, it's a simple wine, but it's not that simple. Like the finish is decently long. Like it's just a really great price performing multiple channel like I don't know how else to put it like I just love the what you're getting with this wine for how much this wine actually like retails for so you'll be happy with it it's like the perfect food wine it could go with all kinds of stuff honestly like we didn't have the best pairing for it because I knew I needed to make this video so I just went ahead and opened it since it was a screw top but um if I were to think about it more like it's gonna go great with a lot of different Italian foods um though I will say that it doesn't have the same you know, like if you're used to drinking Sangiovese or something like it does not have the same structure as that. Um, it certainly goes more towards Italian foods that I don't honestly know exactly what they eat in Abruzzo. I mean, they have like, uh, oh, what's that? Aus no, uh, I forget the name, but um, they have like a really decent like beach area. Um, and so like it's pot, like it's like pasta, but it's not like heavy tomatoes if that makes sense like I think it would be good with tomato stuff as well but it's not going to be as good as some of the other Italian wines so maybe like you go with some of the pastas that just have less tomato aspects to them um and then if we go in a non-Italian direction I would maybe do I don't know like this could just really go great with anything like obviously pizza great you're having a pizza party with friends over perfect thing to pull out I know that's still Italian. Um, burgers could be okay too. Uh, it's hard to normally pair wine with burgers and I think that could really work here. It's just easy. It's just an easy drinking wine. And so if you're having like a, you know, like a normal everyday meal, 
it's probably going to go with it. Like it is going to play very nicely. So hopefully that's a decent number of examples. But like I said, chill it for just a little bit. Don't chill it for too long. Um, share it with friends because you got your leader. And yeah, it's not like meant to be aged forever though. Now that I know it's from 2018, like it's performing really great for being a screw top 2018. Like it's still got a lot, a lot of life in it. So enjoy. <laughs>